Canadian medical schools are overhauling their application process with diversity. I'm Marco Perry. Welcome to the Perry Platform. The Globe and Mail put out a piece today highlighting changes to Canada's medical school applications. It is being revamped in a push for diversity. Now, before I even read this article, I knew there was two paths it could take. It could either establish equality of opportunity, where people are empowered to face everyone else on an equal playing field, and you would then gain a mission based on merit. Or, they could focus on equality of outcome, where they establish arbitrary criteria of diversity and allow less qualified people in over those who are more qualified, simply based on race, gender, religion, etc. The first method that I mentioned is something we should all strive for. Everyone should have a fair shot and merit should overrule all else. The second is a fool's game where you undermine genuine capabilities, punish certain groups to benefit others, and truly rely on discrimination masquerading as a virtue. Equal opportunity is permanent change while equal outcome is artificial. One way you could tackle opportunity is to put programs in place that assist every racial and gender group. Free MCAT prep resources, not basing the application process around things like volunteer work because students with jobs would not be able to perform that, or even producing sponsorships and grants for people based on poverty level. All things that can bridge the gap and allow people to perform based on their own ability. I am fully able to sympathize with the argument that rich students have a way easier time in school because they have less things to worry about. It's a fact. But I think the approach should be, let's enable the less well-off to perform to their true potential. What the article highlights is essentially offering advantages to applicants from certain demographic groups. That is an attempt at equality of outcome, sadly, because you are directly meddling with the outcome. Instead of impacting the value chain early on, before students even apply, they are just going to ignore all of that and let less qualified students in based on their arbitrary criteria of diversity. The article writes, medical schools used to say their job was to find the best and brightest, but the selection methods of GPA, MCAT, and face-to-face -face interviews have resulted in classes that do not meet some universities' goals for racial and socioeconomic diversity. First and foremost, why are racial diversity quotas even a factor when deciding who's going to shape Canada's medical practice in the future? It might not even be so far in the future. These students who are graduating could be thrust into the industry and making tremendous marks as soon as they're in the field. This is a position that solely needs to be based off of merit. Everyone, presumably, would want the best doctor available. This really is not a game. Right now, factors like GPA and the MCAT indicate the levels at which applicants grasp critical concepts. Of course, they are not perfect measures, but they are fair in the sense that people are given clear criteria and that anyone can perform within them. I will agree that the face-to-face -face interviews, okay, that aspect can be dropped. I don't see much value in that. Your interview skills aren't exactly correlated to how well you can perform as a doctor. It opens the door to interviewers making arbitrary decisions, and we don't really need that. The MCAT and a high GPA see more than enough for admittance. The doctors will need to get their interview experience anyways because they're going to be applying for things like placements and later employment. Their time will come. So roughly 10 to 20 percent of applicants are permitted to enroll into medical school, which may be another issue given Canada's lack of doctors, but that's more a topic for another discussion. The University of Manitoba studied admissions and found a pattern. Wealthy white students from big cities were more likely to get interviewed and more likely to get in partly because of built-in advantages. Ah, so this is where I knew they were going. This is probably what they mean by white privilege. Let's see them try to explain it. As they say, the undergrads, they don't have to work part-time for school. They're able to pay for MCAT prep courses. In interviews, they can cite an impressive range of travel and volunteer experiences. The result is that a public university system seems to ensure opportunity for the already fortunate. They have a bit of logic mixed in with a bit of nonsense there. I agree. The system does benefit those more fortunate. 
What does being white have to do with not working part-time though? Or paying for MCAT prep courses, or traveling, or volunteer experience? It's as they mention, it benefits the fortunate. Those are privileges of the fortunate. If you are rich, you have these items available to you. I know some minorities who have all of those things. I also know white people who have none of them. What they are trying to do is paint a picture and try to compare these two things, being rich and being white, as if they are synonymous. What they are also trying to do is use data to make assumptions about people based on their race. What I'm suggesting is you identify your issue and you target it efficiently, not with a political agenda attached. Wealth helps people. That is 100% a fact. You can't argue against that. So, let's focus on wealth in correlation to students then. What this article pushes for is a notion that being white means you inherently have a privilege. Now, I would make the case that all Canadians have a privilege. All people in the United States have a privilege. Most of North America has a privilege. The word has become so cliche that it means very little. My breathing is a privilege to some. This method of intersectionality and breaking people down primarily based on their ethnic and gender groups is a massive disservice to the sovereignty of the individual. You know nothing about the personal tale of someone. It's wholly possible that a white person has never experienced this so-called white privilege. You know it's a fact though, rich people experience rich privilege. My point is, if you have identified a problem, stick to it. Don't try to lump other factors into it that may not in fact be lumpable. I must ask, is it also a white privilege to have your admission spot put on the chopping block for someone else based on diversity? This problem also affects Asian Americans. In the United States, that demographic outperforms people in terms of admission. Ivy League schools are actively putting in place quotas to limit their enrollment. If the goal of university is to attract the brightest and most talented, these quotas are a massive disservice to the integrity of the institution. Now back to the article. To diversify the medical school body, they are looking to add a section on the application to get more information from students to gauge if they qualify for a diverse status. Things like being a visible minority, your sexual orientation, welfare status, are you living with family members, do your family members have addictions, those will all be added to the process. In total, there's going to be 30 such questions. A committee will then rank each question based on a perceived level of disadvantage suffered by the applicant. Already there is a problem because it's only a perceived disadvantage. Right in the wording, you don't even know if it's true. Then the values will be added to create a modifier meant to reflect the degree to which the applicant's background would put them at a disadvantage. Right now, the goal is a 5% increase in students with diversity status. One of the doctors says, who is in charge of the admission process, we did not want to have a quota, but we want an increase in the number of diverse individuals on an incremental basis. What the doctor fails to understand is the negative effect of replacing more qualified people with less qualified people based on diversity alone is still the same regardless of whether you want to call it a quota or not. The consequences will be there. Instead of empowering disadvantaged students to achieve based on their own merit, you want to hand them the short-term solution of instant, easier access now. Different universities have different approaches, but it seems like a large chunk are looking to adopt the ideology. The University of Toronto will have a special stream for black applicants. The University of Saskatchewan will reserve 6% of their seats for families earning below $80,000. The University of Calgary is going to ask underrepresented groups to highlight their background and experiences. So some of those are obviously less disastrous than others, but the ideology, it's there, and it's faulty. You sacrifice meritocracy and real grassroots solutions for short-term virtue signaling. There are certain studies that cite some people may receive better care when they get a doctor of the same race as them, and that's a pillar that the article tries to stand on. They say physicians should reflect the population they serve. Do they even know what that means? I really have to ask. The majority of Canada is white. Should applications ensure the majority of students be white to reflect the population they serve? It's as they say. Physicians should reflect the population they serve. 
It's a foolish point to make and they don't say it honestly or else it would be counterproductive to their own goals and I don't agree with it either way. Some people may prefer a doctor of their own race but that does not trump the logical goal of generally having the highest caliber of doctor available. You do not get to pick your doctor often especially in an emergency. The ideal way to envision this is to act as if you don't know who you're going to be treated by because when you really do need one in an emergency chances are you won't. In situations like that the most qualified people would logically be more desired. I'm appalled at the current state of affairs within universities. They actively undermine their own supposed goals and are willing to play a game of intersectionality at the expense of Canada. They also make the false case that diversity based on ethnicity will result in diversity of opinion. It's simply not true. There is more to a person than just their race and it's actually counterproductive and seemingly in contrast to their goals by saying, we think just because you are X, Y, and Z, you will think this way. What happened to treating people as an individual? If you take a minority who grew up in poverty and a minority who grew up in extreme wealth, do you really think that they're going to have the same worldview as each other? How about if you take a minority and a white person who both grew up in poverty? It seems likely they may have more in line views. It's not just about race, there are so many intricacies that go into creating diversity of thought and trying to boil it down to intersectionality, it's a terrible idea and we're going to start seeing the backlash of that soon if these policies continue to fester. It's infested now the Canadian medical school applications. They're actively willing to sabotage merit of applicants for diversity and diversity of race and gender and sexual orientation at that, not even directly diversity of thought, which would be more productive. To me it just seems like there's so many better ways to empower people and this is really a band-aid. Band-aids don't look at the long-term goals and they're just a short-term solution that doesn't really fix anything, just covers it up. So that's about it for today. If you enjoyed the content be sure to leave a review and follow me on Twitter at Perry Platform. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon.